Welcome back to TFT Central. We've had loads of requests for this one. So today we're going to be going through the best settings guide for the Dell Alienware AW3225QF, their 32 inch OLED monitor. We've restored the screen to factory settings. So we're going to set it up for both SDR and HDR usage. So let's do SDR first of all. So if we open up the main on-screen menu, the first thing you're going to want to change is the preset mode. So it's on standard by default and you've really got two options here. If you want to operate with a more accurate SDR performance with an sRGB color space, then we're going to actually want to use the creator preset mode and the color space set on sRGB. So that will clamp the color gamut back to the sRGB reference space and give you the most optimal performance for that kind of content. Make sure that the gamut is still set at 2.2. And then you'll see that if you come back out into the brightness and contrast section, you do thankfully still have access to change these settings. So you can adjust these to your liking. We're gonna lower this down somewhere around a setting of about 40, 43, somewhere in that kind of range should give you a luminance of around 120 nits. No need to change the contrast setting in this mode at all. And there's no access to any other color or image settings really in sRGB mode. So if you want to use sRGB for SDR content, then use creator in that way. The other option, if you want to use the full native wide gamut of the panel, is to come and use the custom color mode. So this will operate with the wide gamma and it will give you more saturated, colorful and vivid images. Perhaps you might want that for gaming and video and that kind of thing. Or if you're not that bothered about the accuracy as it were for sRGB and SDR content. When you use the custom color mode, you also then have access to the RGB channels there in the gain section here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust these down to a setting of 97 for red, 98 for green, and we'll leave blue on 100. So that should give you a white point of around 6,500 Kelvin or D65, which is what we want. No need to change any of the other settings in there. So the custom color mode, again, you can come back and change the brightness. Setting of around 43 should give you a luminance of 120 nits, but you can set that higher or lower depending on your ambient lighting conditions and your room environment. So there are two different modes that you can use. You can obviously play around with the game enhance modes if you want to use any of those settings, the timer, the frame rate counter, and that kind of thing. Same with dark stabilizer. If you feel you need to boost some of the near black detail in darker content, that can be quite useful for bringing out some detail in very dark scenes. In the Alien FX lighting menu, you can obviously control the RGB lighting that's on the screen if you want. The only other setting you might want to change is in the Others section. You can scroll down here and you might want to enable HDMI CEC. That will auto detect any HDMI input when it's powered on. So if you've got a games console or a Blu-ray player or something connected, when you power that on, the screen will auto switch over to that input, which is quite handy. You'll see there's not really any OLED care features that you can change or customize on this screen. You can manually run the pixel refresh if you want, or if the panel health indicator suggests you should, then you can trigger that here. There's no other settings really to adjust in this other section of the menu. So we'll also set the screen up now for HDR usage. So there's a couple of different settings that you might want to use here in the display section of the menu. The main one is the smart HDR mode. So you'll see there's a wide range of different modes to choose from here. We found that actually most of them operated with the same behavior and the same peak luminance. The mode that delivers you the maximum capability of the panel in terms of the peak luminance is the HDR peak 1000 mode. So we'd recommend switching to that mode for the optimal luminance. Check out the link in the description below for some more testing on these different modes, particularly the difference between display HDR true black and the HDR peak 1000. You'll notice there is more aggressive dimming in the peak 1000 mode, particularly when you're using Windows desktop or other SDR content, but this should open up the full brightness capability of the panel. By all means, experiment with the other modes though, because this really does vary depending on your game, your video, the content, your settings and that kind of thing. The other mode that you might want to change or experiment with is the Dolby Vision settings. So you'll see there's options here for bright, dark, game and off. Now this can be really quite messy from a PC. A lot of the time when you input an HDR signal from the PC, even if it's just an HDR10 signal, the Dolby Vision mode will become active on the screen and that will in turn cause problems with the PQ tracking and the brightness and other things. 
We would recommend if you're using HDR from a PC, you probably want to turn this setting to off unless you know you're specifically going to be using Dolby Vision content, which is pretty rare and pretty difficult to get working from a PC anyway. So for PC HDR input, we probably turn Dolby Vision to off to avoid complications. And then that way the smart HDR, the HDR10 mode will kick in when it detects an HDR signal. If you're using the screen for an external device like a games console or a streaming stick or a Blu-ray player or something, the selection of the HDR modes is far more automatic and intuitive. So it should intelligently switch between Dolby Vision and HDR10 mode, depending on which content you input. The screen seems to be able to handle that a lot better than it can from a PC. So you might want to turn Dolby Vision back on here, experiment with the other modes, but we expect the bright mode probably to be preferable for most people. So if you're using the screen from a games console or something that supports Dolby Vision gaming, then turn that mode on. You'll see when you input the different HDR sources to the screen, a little pop-up will appear in the menu and you'll see whether it's running in Dolby Vision mode or HDR10 mode. Just check that it's running in the correct mode for the input that you've selected. So just to reiterate, from a PC, we probably turn Dolby Vision mode off and leave the HDR mode to peak 1000. For external devices and the HDMI inputs from those, we'd leave Dolby Vision turned on because it should be able to auto switch between Dolby Vision and HDR10 modes. So that's it really. You can change some of the personalized settings if you want to create quick access to any of the other uh, options like the preset modes or maybe some of the specific settings that you might use more regularly like the smart HDR function that can make it a bit easier to get between the different modes. Apart from that there shouldn't be much else to change on this screen. We'll leave links in the description below to our calibrated settings and our ICZ profile. Let us know in the comments section below if you've got any questions at all. Please hit subscribe to stay up to date on future reviews, news and articles. We'll catch you next time.